first of all, th- th- there's a lot of pressure on Joe Biden in the wake of my reporting to endorse Kamala Harris. There are people around Kamala Harris who think it's nuts, and I do too, because the last thing she needs is to be a creature of Joe Biden, the creature of a backroom deal, the creature of the Biden-Harris record on issues that Republicans will attack her on. And so there are people around her who say, we don't need it. I can't find anybody who's going to run against her. Gavin Newsom's not going to run against her. Rob, uh, Governor Shapiro's not going to run against her. Um, uh, Governor Pritzker's not going to run against her. Cooper's not going to run against her. So I think, as I wrote this morning, this could be a contested election that's uncontested. So we're going to talk about that and, and where that stands. The other thing is, in terms of her running mate, if she is the nominee, um, there's a lot of talk about. Hey, guys, it's your girl, Melanie. And as you've probably seen already, Joe Biden has dropped out of the presidential race. I told you guys that before. I knew it would happen this weekend. I did not talk about it too much, but I have some more details that I want to give you. We know he originally did his letter that he's dropping out from the presidential race. He is continuing to stay in as president. So some people are confused about whether he's just dropping out the race. Is he quitting as president? No, he is not leaving the White House. They're not, he's not doing that, but he is, he's no longer going to run. Now, he did endorse Kamala Harris separately. It was not in his original letter dropping out. He talks about, in fact, let me read the letter to you guys. Um, and then I'll come back to this endorsement because I also want to, this video specifically, I want to talk about who will likely be her running mate. So I want to take you to his letter and what he said, just he's going into what he's accomplished and all of that. And it's his greatest honor. I will speak to the nation later this week in more detail about my decision. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude for all those who have worked so hard to see me reelected. I want to thank Vice President Kamala Harris for being an extraordinary partner in all this work. Okay, so he calls her a partner in this, but he did not endorse her. Now, then he posted on social media. So the letter was posted, the official resignation letter from the the ticket, from the election. Now, this was just a social media post. This is on on his Instagram and Twitter. My fellow Democrats, I have decided not to accept the nomination and to focus all my energies on my duties as president for the remainder of my term. My very first decision as the party nominee in 2020 was to pick Kamala Harris as my vice president. And it's been the best decision I've made. Today, I want to offer my full support and endorsement for Kamala to be the nominee of our party this year. Democrats, it's time to come together and beat Trump. Let's do this. Now, I did a video yesterday where I talked about he did not choose who was best to be his vice president. There was a group of black women He needed their endorsement. He needed their help to get over the the line, black women specifically. So these black women, in fact, let me play that clip for you. I played it yesterday, but understand he didn't choose Kamala Harris because she was the best choice. This is why he chose Kamala Harris. I also remember the summer of 2020, I was a part of a large group of black women where we told Biden, hey, If your VP better be a black woman, here is the short list. You need to pick someone from this list. And fortunately, he did. And so black women are paying attention because we hear what's going on. We see what's going on and we don't like it. So as you can see, there was a group of black women who wanted, who had a list of black women that he had to choose from. Now, let's be clear. Kamala Harris, most black people do not consider her black. She's not black. She's not what's considered um, a foundational black American. She is the children of two immigrants who are not ancestral slaves here in the United States. That may not be a big deal to people outside the black community, but it is a very big deal to black people who are very invested in politics. Kamala Harris and even her father, even though he's Jamaican, he is not of pure African descent. There, he he's biracial. His her grandfather was a slave owner, was a white slave owner. So Kamala Harris is not black. Her mother is full India from Indian from India. So I don't know where they get this notion that she is black. She the most black she's been is because she went to Howard University, which is a historically black university. But she is not a black woman in terms of 
being a historically foundational black American. This is going to be an issue, okay? Outside of the other issues that Kamala Harris has. She has very bad polling. She's unlikable. She's not a great speaker. She has just as many gaffes as Joe Biden does. So these are gonna be issues. And so he picked the most non-black woman on that list to be his running mate. So keep that in mind. And if you ask a lot of black people, part of be in my comments, they are not for her, okay? Now we're gonna see a bump in the polls because from, from the democratic base, because the energy of somebody new, you have Biden now gone where you don't have, they don't have to always fight against, you know, his um, cognitive decline. We know he's going to be out, right? But there are, there are issues, again, he called her a partner. He's endorsing her. That means all of Biden's policies, failed or not, are tied to Kamala Harris. Now, let me give you some of her record to show you what she's done as vice president. Biden Harris administration has a mixed record on criminal justice reform. I'll get into that in the beginning, but let's, the main thing that is gonna be used against her, and let me move this over, make it a little bigger for you guys. It says Harris's early missteps on immigration could be used against her. They weren't just early. I'm just pulling from this article just to get this out here. But it says one of Harris's first assignments as vice president in 2021 was a diplomatic role at the U.S. southern border. But the rollout was fairly disorganized. News headlines described Harris as the point person on immigration. But the vice president doesn't oversee the border. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security does. Right. So there's always this finger pointing and, well, it's not my responsibility. I'm just representing blah, blah, blah. I, you know, you passing the buck, especially on the failed policies, failed um, things that are going on. They're not going to take responsibility. And you can see, you definitely are going to see her try to skirt that away from her responsibility. And now that we know that Homeland Security and, uh, well, it, that's another news, the Secret Service, is the uh, Kimberly Cheeto sh will be resigning tomorrow. But we also know Homeland Security um, is in trouble, Mayorkas, because of what happened with the Trump assassination. So it will be an easy, it, it will be an easy layup for, for them to try to deflect any border issues or anything related to this to him over there to Homeland Security, the heat is already on them for the for the Trump assassination attempt. This combined with verbal slip ups in press interviews, including a viral clip from a speech in Guatemala in which she told people who were considering making the dangerous trek to the US, do not come, do not come, bruised her image. Um, in June, Biden announced an executive order to bar migrants who unlawfully cross the border, the southern border from seeking asylum. The order is conditional and goes into effect when crossings uh, exceed our ability to deliver timely consequences, according to an announcement from the White House. Advocates have decried the move, saying it raises the bar for asylum seekers. Republicans have seized on Harris's earlier flubs on immigration and for years have referred to her as a border czar, a jab that also came up again during the Republican National Convention. She is the border czar she, that she was tasked with being the 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 per the point person to the White House to the to the border. What we know again, regardless of that, she is Joe Biden's partner. So any failed policies, including this outrageous immigration, um, uh, illegal immigration uh, crisis that we have at the border, are tied to her now. And so is tied to her through Joe Biden, and is tied to her through she was the point person at the White House, the executive branch to manage that to be the 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 person that oversees that. During the Republican convention, former presidential candidate Nikki Haley said Kamala had one job, one job, and that was to fix the border. Now imagine her in charge of the entire country. Now I will do a video that goes more onto um, her record as a prosecutor in California. It's not great. Um, this is going to be another issue, I think, for the black community in particular, once they actually, it's it's vetted out. Um, and in 2020, she also ran very left to Biden on different issues and incarceration and policing. So I'm not going to go into those details. Well, this video will last forever. But now let me show you 
the people that could possibly be her running mate and who I believe it will be. So most of you will not recognize who most of these guys are. So from left to right, we have North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper. I doubt it will be him. Um, uh, uh, Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, possibly, but I don't think he would want to do it. I believe it would be somewhat of a career suicide. Um, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly. This is the favorite, in my opinion, and I'm going to play a piece for you guys so you can understand why. And then um, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania. These are the guys that are most talked about. Now, who also is talked about as being on her ticket is Gr Governor Gretchen Whitmore of Michigan, where they're talking about two women on the ticket to beat Trump. The issue I see with Gretchen Whitmore is I think she would outshine Kamala Harris too much. And she actually is a better presidential candidate than a vice president candidate. Mark Kelly, out of all, all of, I would say Andy Bashir and um, Josh Shapiro are too much of superstars. They are growing. They are becoming, you know, uh, they're very liked within the Democrat party. They're very, they can be very moderate and they're seen as people that have a bright future within the Democrat party. They could possibly, you know, um, be second in ticket, but this is the thing guys, the Democrat party knows Kamala Harris is not going to win. They did not replace Biden because they're looking for somebody who is going to beat Trump. That, that ship has sailed. What they're trying to do now is save the down ballot. That is the focus right now so that they can win the down ballot and possibly retain the Senate and also pick up the House so that they can have both um, the House and the Senate to put checks and measures on Trump. That is the main focus now. It is not about winning the election. Yeah, that's like pie in the sky dream scenario that could happen. But they were seeing how Biden was dragging down the entire ticket. This is why you saw a lot of Democrats come out against him because these, a lot of these people are up for election. Biden was dragging down their tickets. He didn't, they didn't even want him to campaign for him, for them. Okay. They were trying to disassociate from Biden. This is why Nancy Pelosi, uh, Hakeem Jeffries, Chuck Schumer, Barack Obama, You've seen them and their operatives, even George Clooney, the donors, all of them dried up all fundraising towards Biden and the down ballots until Biden was out. This is how they got him out. And I may do an analysis on how they got him out and kind of really jump ship and they're like rats and turned on him. And it's, you know, we know how deceptive and how these people are. As soon as you run out of your, your usefulness, they're going to throw you away. So they used the donors. The donors was really, people could say all these different things to him, but it was the donations, the big donors that completely wiped him out and why he was forced to make this decision. So if now with Kamala Harris being at the top of the ticket, they need somebody, you know, the, the, she has a, when you pick a running mate, there's, especially now, I don't know so much if Trump had to do that. Trump has enough support. He could have picked anybody, honestly, but you saw what he did with Mike Pence. He picked Mike Pence, an evangelical guy, um, seen as kind of like almost like pastorish, like very Christian, very conservative. He helped bring in that Bible belt, that evangelical vote, um, more stable. He was nice. He didn't say anything outrageous. And he was really the opposite personality of Trump. And that's what they try to do. When you think of Barack Obama, he chose Joe Biden. Barack Obama was young. He's a black guy, really biracial black guy. And you know, for people, they weren't sure about him. He has, he, he was, had not had that much experience. Joe Biden had been around forever. Okay. He's a white guy. He was older. He was, he had been part of the establishment for decades at that point. And so he was seen as a counterpoint, a counterbalance to Obama. Same thing can be said about, you can think of, um, you can think of Harris, Kamala Harris, like Obama. Now she is not Obama in terms of her, 
she's not a good orator. She's not a good speaker. She doesn't have the charisma or charm at all. She's people see her as a laughing hyena. It's just, she's seen comically. She's not really seen as some, this transformational figure that back in 2008, Obama, Obama was seen by the whole world. Nobody's really checking for Kamala in that way, but she's seen as inexperienced. She's seen as not serious. Um, she is a woman of color. She's not a black woman, woman of color. She is a woman. These are things that can be off putting for a large part of the electorate. Um, and outside of that, her record is not great. So you need someone who is more likable. Andy Bashir, Josh Shapiro, Roy Cooper. These are not people think of that are like likable that they are just thinking of. But who is likable and who has a likable story? Well, that's going to be Mark Kelly. If you don't know who Mark Kelly is, let me give you some information. Okay, so Senator Mark Kelly, obviously, he fits the bill in terms of what he looks like. Let me make this bigger so you guys aren't seeing these side ads that are not related to what we're doing right now. Here we go. And I'm kind of doing this on the fly, so everything's not going to be perfect, so bear with me. Um... <clears throat> Okay, Senator, oh, here we go. Senator Mark Kelly often gets overshadowed by his more flamboyant counterpart from Arizona, uh, independent Senator uh, Kirsten Sinema. But Kelly has a record most Democrats could only dream of, being as he is both a Navy veteran and a former astronaut. Okay, right there, you've got two points. I mean, the man is a form, he's a Navy veteran and an astronaut. That is pretty impressive. Kelly stepped into politics, this is the key, after his wife, former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords was shot in the head and forced to retire in 2011. Since then, he's become an outspoken advocate for ending gun violence. This is another reason why he is a good counterbalance to Trump. Trump was just, uh, um, uh, there was just an assassination attempt on Trump. So if they actually did shoot his wife in the head, you see how they can now taking away some of the, the, the juice, the steam, the push that Trump may get for his assassination attempt. Well, Mark Kelly can speak on my wife actually was shot in the head. Okay. He knows that. So there is now that empathy side, that, that same story side. It's not the same thing, but you get what I mean. Um, <clears throat> In 2020, when Biden and Harris won Arizona, Zona, Kelly outpaced the top of the ticket in a special election to finish out the term of Senator John McCain. So John McCain was beloved, okay? And um, John McCain was is a beloved figure, not, not so much as Trump is, but he was a, you know, a kind of a figure, but he was able to take over. So Republicans even, People, he, he, he crossed party lines in order to take over the ticket for McCain. I mean, to, to be step in once there was, um, th there was a new, uh, election. Once John McCain died, a Democrat, Mark Kelly was able to pick that seat up. So that shows that he is likable on both sides of the aisle. All right. That is, that is concerning, uh, for if you are part of, if you are part of the Trump team or Republicans, Two years later, he roundly beat ultra MAGA candidate Blake Masters, who, like Vance, is a disciple of venture capitalist Peter Thiel. So he has a record of beating MAGA candidates. You see, are you starting to see where he's he's really fitting in the dots? Kelly is also a prolific fundraiser who would have little trouble bringing cash to the ticket. Picking Kelly would signal that Democrats are serious about keeping the West in their column, a border state Democrat. He could push back on criticisms from Republicans that Trump will be better at handling immigration. I don't know about that because the immigration crisis is out of control um, under Biden and that is tied to Harris. As a veteran, he has taken up McCain's mantle as an ardent defender of Ukraine, which would contrast, contrast with Vance's opposition to supporting the country against Putin's aggression. But Kelly's record in Arizona might be the exact reasons Democrats want to keep him in the Senate. So that is the other thing. You know, it's going to be hard to dig in on him. It's going to be hard 
for Trump and everyone else to dig in on him. There's not much to dislike about Mark Kelly other than the fact that he is a Democrat and he will be running off of the Democrat record and policies, which are unpopular right now. Like, let's keep it real. Biden was unpopular well before his debate. Biden's policies were unpopular well before the debate. He was losing in the polls before the debate. So yes, that all exasperated it and sped up his, you know, the end. But Democrat policies, they have an issue overall with that. With, with their policies because of the, the, the economy, immigration, there's so many issues that need to be addressed. And Kamala Harris will be seen as not having fresh ideas or a fresh face or anything fresh that she's bringing. She is a continuation of Biden 2.0 because she is his vice president and he's endorsed her and called her his partner. And anything that he's tied to that's been negative, she's gonna be tied to. They're gonna get a bump because this is a fresh face, again, they've stop the bleeding of Biden and his cognitive decline being front of front and center. Although the Republicans are going to keep bringing that up, keep bringing, how long did you know? No, why did you, you know, and how they betray their own. And there's so many points that can be brought up about this, but you get what I mean. We're not going to see Biden and they're going to keep talking about, he can't run four more years. They're going to get a boost from their base because this is new, but there's also going to be people in the Democrat party that are disenfranchised and are upset that they treated Joe Biden this way. Um, they, 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 you know, you can see the grumblings all over social media. They're very upset that they treated Biden this way and kicked him to the curb. But at the end of the day, these people hate Trump so much that they will end up even though they hate Trump so much, they are going to end up still voting blue no matter who. You see that everywhere. They would pick they would pick Biden if he was in a casket and over Trump because they hate Trump. At the end of the day, the Democrat Party base hates Trump. We're not we're not talking about the base right now. We're talking about independents such as myself and how they could actually sway independents. You just need a little movement, okay? That we're talking thousands of votes. We're talking about swing states with very slim margins that could push them over the edge. So that's what we're dealing with. And that's what we're gonna to have to start unpacking as we see more and more come out. Um, and let me just show you this one last thing. I'm not the only person who thinks Mark Kelly will be the nominee, the vice presidential nominee. This is my Mark Halp Halperin, I can never say his name, Mark Halperin from Two Way. He is actually the first person that I heard about, you know, Biden dropping out. Everything that he said has pretty much come true. He said that Biden was going to drop out on Sunday, okay? But he's an insider. People, Joe Scarborough's been on here, New Gingrich, Megan McCain, other senators, like people in politics have been on this show that he has. Um, it's a Zoom call. It'll be like 300 people. Uh, it'll be politicians, news organizations, media, like personalities, whether you like them or not, left and right will be on this, discussing this, but he has a lot of insider information. So literally the name of this video is if Harris gets nominated, Mark Kelly could be her VP. At one point when they were still speculation, Gretchen Whitmer was the name they were thinking, but they think there was a bridge too far, two things were bridged too far. Having Ben Shapiro, who is Jewish, um, and he's, they not going to want to remove him from the state that not Ben Shapiro, Josh Shapiro, Josh Shapiro, who's Jewish, having a woman of color and a Jew would be a bridge too far. The Democrats thought that that would not get picked up. Um, cause he's, his name has been heavily talked about. And then also Gretchen Whitmer, there was like, you know, two women on a ticket, but that can be difficult to get through having two women as president and vice president. And we're talking about Democrats who will play very much into identity politics. They're saying this is what Democrats are saying. I'm not even saying this. Democrats, you know, they say one thing publicly, but they think another thing internally. They really didn't even want Kamala Harris, but that's a video for another time. They were forced and strong armed into her, just like Joe Biden was. So let's get into why he, he, his reporting, which he reported accurately that Biden was going to drop out on Sunday. Let me tell you about my reporting and, and just to extend some of it. Um, first of all, th th there's a lot of pressure on Joe Biden in the wake of my reporting to endorse Kamala Harris. There are people around Kamala Harris who think it's nuts. And I do, too, because the last thing she needs is to be a creature of Joe Biden, the creature of a backroom deal. 
the creature of the Biden-Harris record on issues that Republicans will attack her on. And so there are people around her who say, we don't need it. I can't find anybody who's going to run against her. Gavin Newsom's not going to run against her. Rob, uh, Governor Shapiro's not going to run against her. Um, uh, Governor Pritzker's not going to run against her. Cooper's not going to run against her. So I think, as I wrote this morning, this could be a contested election that's uncontested. So we're going to talk about that and, and where that stands. The other thing is, in terms of her running mate, if she is the nominee, um, there was a lot of talk about Bashir in my sources yesterday. The name that's come up today in Republican circles and also, interestingly, in the Trump camp is Mark Kelly. Mark Kelly is seen by people close to Trump as the, the smart choice if Kamala Harris is picking a running mate because he could potentially put a state in play and give that ticket another path, another electoral college path. He's, a, he's, a, he's got a hero story. He's a likable guy. And if you ask me today, based on the Trump analysis and, and some stuff I've heard from from uh, Democrats, watch this if develop. If she's a nominee, watch potentially gravitation towards Mark Kelly. So let's start out, guys, talking about the question of Joe Biden. Uh, he's a he's a horrible decision maker. He's so this was streamed two days ago, um, and you have to go back on two ways videos just, just to follow this pipeline. But he is the person that upset Joe Biden and like his camp the most because he had all this insider information. For some reason, everyone talks to Mark Halperin. Um, that's Sean Sp Spicer right there sitting uh, on the call right now. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of people on that call, but he was the first person to really put out there Mark Kelly and getting the information and getting the grumblings that what's going on. And I'm going to be honest, he makes the most sense he means a hero it's going to be hard to attack him so republicans have already braced themselves for this and are coming up with a dossier of what they can use against them their counterpoints believe me they are working overtime to dig in on him they the other people would be easier for them to come against but he's going to be difficult so there's going to be a lot going on now one of the things he said as well is that Kamala's being anointed as, you know, just given this role, same thing as how she was chosen. And the open convention was talked about a lot where they have different people throw their names in the hat, in the ring. The problem with that is that they wanted to do that. Nancy Pelosi, they wanted to do this thing where, um, uh, uh they had these different round tables, these town halls and would present different candidates. No one wants to run. No one wants to give up what they currently have for what they see is going to be a failed presidential um, you know, race. They believe Trump is going to win. Again, this is to save the down ballot. Possibly could win. I never say never, you know, you never know, <laughs> okay? But a lot of people don't wanna tie themselves to Biden, to Biden's record, to his unpopular, he's not popular. If he was going out really popular and something drastic happened to him, then it would look heroic stepping up into his shoes. This right now is a, this is a losing situation. So no one has thrown their hat in the ring. And I think that is why they said Kamala needs, they're going to go ahead with Kamala. I think also the threat of possibly losing a large um, block of the black base, particularly black women. Okay. Which did help put Biden into office, which I mean, to the point of picking his vice president by that. That is how influential that was. And they would be very upset if he bypassed Kamala for someone else, particularly someone who was white and a male. It doesn't matter if they're qualified or not. Again, I don't care about qualifications. You just got to hit the identity politics and boom, you're in. So I will continue to bring you more coverage on this um, and any breaking news as I find it. I'm, I have some reports I want to get give to you guys. We've got to start digging into Kamala Harris. Joe Biden um, has been laid to rest figuratively <laughs> within the Democrat Party. They have taken him out uh, and he's, he's giving in. So we got more to come. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.